So we are going to start by scanning. We're going to be looking at, um, at supraclavicular structures to start with, but we're going to start by scanning the neck. And so I'm going to place the transducer um, right in the mid-neck, right over the thyroid. And so this is the isthmus of the thyroid and the trachea. And then we're going to start moving laterally to our patient's right side. And you can see the lateral lobe of the thyroid. Again, this is the isthmus. And we think about the isthmus being at the C6 level. And so as we come across, we're going to try and stay at about the same level. You can see the carotid artery, the jugular vein, and the vagus nerve between the two of them. You can see the sternocleidomastoid muscle, superficial. And then we're going to keep, and actually, if you could just bear down real hard. And you can see the jugular get quite bigger. And then you can relax. So that, that can help you just figure out your landmarks. And then we're going to keep moving lateral. And what we'll see is we see both muscle and uh, nerve structure. And so um, the nerve structure is the brachial plexus. The muscle uh, to the more medial side is going to be the anterior scalene. And towards the lateral or posterior side is going to be the middle scalene. And so there's a couple different ways you can approach this, but we and you can see the circular structures right in the middle of the screen splitting the two scalenes at the interscalene um, notch or groove. And those are the trunks and the roots of the brachial plexus. And so we try to figure out which root is which. And the best way to do that is to look at the bony processes. So if we scan superiorly, you will see that hypoechoic circle dive deep and be surrounded by bone. There's a very prominent anterior tubercle and there's a posterior tubercle. So this might be the C6 level. We go up one more. And again, you see an anterior and posterior tubercle at the C5 level. And so then we'll work our way down. This will really tell us the answer. So we think that's C5. We think that's C6. And the key is that C7 should not have an anterior tubercle. And so if we see that one come up right there, we see a posterior tubercle right there, but no anterior tubercle. So that's C7. And then C8 comes and joins right there. And T1 will come up at the very bottom. And so if we go back, again, that's 6 and that's 5. And we should see five and six, we see them together. So there's five right there, six right there. And we should see those two join each other. As we keep scanning, they can, should join together to form the upper trunk, which they do right there. And so then the, the structures of interest, we're going to look at a couple things here. Let's start with the phrenic nerve. So the phrenic nerve is going to run um, anterior to the anterior scalene muscle. And it's often a single prominent fascicle. Sometimes you'll see two fascicles. And so again, we have the anterior scalene muscle right in the center of the screen, uh, middle scalene here. And we're going to look superficial uh, to that muscle. I'm going superior, and now I'm going to go inferior. And you'll see a single fascicle right on top of that muscle right there. And uh, it'll slide medial. And so that is the phrenic nerve over the anterior scalene muscle. You can see that right across there. I'm scanning superior and inferior, and you can see it go from lateral to medial. So that's the phrenic nerve uh, forming from C3, 4, and 5. We can really only see the, the C5 root right there and the nerve coming right across there. Okay, the next is going to be the dorsal scapular and the long thoracic. These often run very close to each other, and they will run through. They come, kind of split the middle scalene. And so, again, we're, we're at C5 right here. And so if we're going to look at C5 and then posterior to C5, or um, I guess sort of lateral and posterior, and you can see uh, nerve structure splitting the middle scalene right there. And then, and that's the dorsal scapular. And then you keep scanning, and there you'll see the long thoracic. 
So long thoracic splits and then dives posterior and deep. So long thoracic there, dorsal scapular there. We can try to find, um, the next nerve of interest is gonna be the suprascapular. And the suprascapular we know does come off um, uh, C5 or the upper trunk. And so again, we see uh, C5 and 6 joining together right there. And then you'll see a pretty uh, prominent fascicle coming posterior off of that, which is the suprascapular nerve. And it's hard to follow much up here. We oftentimes will look at it, and I'll show you this in just a moment, um, sort of a posterior view as it goes through the suprascapular notch. But that is it right there coming off the upper trunk. Okay, and now we're gonna to move to this posterior view. I'm add a little more gel. <clears throat> now we'll turn your chair a little bit this way. And I'm gonna just put that about right there. And we will start, I'm gonna palpate, but we'll find the spine of the scapula is right here. And then I'm gonna, if we started on the spine, that's the spine itself right there. And I'm gonna move a little bit superior. And then we're gonna end up with the uh, supraspinatus muscle. We have, the, we have the skin, the subcutaneous tissue, the trapezius muscle, and then the supraspinatus muscle. If we move medial, you will see the medial border of the scapula right there. And if we angle superiorly a little bit off the medial border, you will see the levator scapuli and then uh, some rhomboid muscles as we go more inferior. But come back here. We've got the, um, we've got the supraspinatus and then we've got the um, supraspinatus fossa or the bone of the scapula itself. And so we're gonna kind of follow that and we're gonna move from medial to lateral and we're gonna look for the suprascapular notch which um, sometimes is prominent and easy to see, other times not as easy. And so we're moving lateral. And we've got a notch right there, so it's right in the center of the screen. And I might increase my gain just a little bit, see if that makes that a little easier to see. So you can see there's the supra, um, scapular ligament running across, and then deep to that is where the nerve runs, and superficial is where the uh, vessel is located. And that's the suprascapular nerve at the suprascapular notch. Okay, and we're gonna do the pectoral uh, branches. So, going to scan right here and this direction is going to be medial this is going to be lateral and let me get a little more gel let me turn our gain down just a little bit Okay, so the most superficial muscle is the pec major, and then deep to that is the pec minor. And we have a lateral and medial pectoral nerves. And so you can see running right between uh, the muscles there is the lateral pectoral nerve and medial as we come more this direction. And we don't end up evaluating these nerves very often. The anesthesiologist will block these nerves uh, for some of their blocks. But you can see, you can put Doppler over that to show, to look for any vascular structures. No, 
Okay. And I believe that is it.